Hey everybody, David here, and this is a, another Fantasy Grounds tutorial, and this is a tutorial that was requested by one of my viewers on YouTube named Hakiko Goblin, and this tutorial is going to show you how to do the basics of running a combat and getting it all set up uh, from one of the pre-made modules that are on the Fantasy Grounds store that you can purchase. Alright, so Hakiko Goblin this is what you need to do and hopefully this will answer all of your questions that you had. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the module activated. And when you buy a module from the Fantasy Ground store, it does not come activated and you want to make sure that you load it into your library. So you want to come down here on the right hand side, this button here named library, uh, go to the modules section and look for Lost Mine of Fandelver because your question uh, was about the the first goblin ambush that was on the way to the Cragmall Cave and all of your modules that you've purchased or if you've made will show up here. Anything that has the tag that enables it to be used with the 5e uh, plugin. So here's Lost Mine of Fandelver. You just make sure that the, the book is open and if you don't want the players to see it uh, which I, I, I usually don't. I just put the one of the little little red signs there. Bam, they can't see it. So now that we've got our module activated, you can go back to your library and see that, hey, here's Lost Mine of Fandelver. So you just, very easy. You don't even have to worry about anything in here. You can just shut it down right there. You just get out of the library, to be honest. Because the next place you want to go is to your Story tab. Now when Fantasy Grounds puts things together, they usually put uh, a tab. You'll see that there's a bunch of different tabs. Depends on how many modules you have activated. There could literally be, you could stretch this story tab all the way over and then all the way over to another screen. And, you know, take for instance, if you have Princes of Apocalypse, Out of the Abyss, you know, Horde of the Dragon Queen, Lost Mine of Fandelver, and the Rise of Tiamat all activated, then there's going to be a thousand little tabs down here that basically are each chapter of every book. So the less modules you have activated, the less tabs that you're going to have. And the more modules you have activated, the more tabs you're going to have, and that's just more sifting you have to do, which they are, they are grouped together, but which is not a problem. So let's go ahead and uh, find our tab for... Lost Man Mana Fandelver, and uh, I believe that uh, they're all the tabs right here. So here we go. Here's the Lost Mana Fandelver, part one, part two, part three, and part four. We only need part one. So let's go ahead and check out Goblin Arrows. Now, when you hit Goblin Arrows, you're going to see that, okay, here's everything that's in this part of the module. But if you go back to the contents portion, which is on the, the main Lost Mine of Fantel Fandelver uh, tab, just hit the contents and you'll see that it kind of breaks down the parts anyway. So that way you don't even need to have you know, the, the uh, story tab open anymore. You can just keep this here. You can minimize it by right clicking and hitting the minimize button and you can kind of keep it down here. And instead of opening up your story tab all the time, you can just bam open it up super fast there. Now you were asking about you're getting confused about how to get everything set up for combat and I'm sorry to kind of go uh, before the combat but I wanted to show you just in case and anybody else that's wondering to load the module and all that good stuff. So alright so you, you're looking for the the beginning encounter when you're traveling along the road with the caravan that you left uh, Neverwinter or wherever that you leave and you're heading to Fandolin. So you want uh, part one which is Goblin Arrows. Alright so when you click on that it's now going to have everything in the module pretty much in order. Fantasy Grounds is really good about keeping everything in order. They're really good about keeping all of the uh, any kind of art associated with that section with that particular section they're good about keeping the players maps the DM maps everything they're organized for you as a DM now when we click on the goblin ambush now it's the second one down in the module there is no map alright there is no map it is basically uh, what they were wanting to do with fifth edition was theater of mind and seeing that there is no 
map for this there is no map here all right but there is the encounter and when you click on the encounter here are the four little goblins that ambush you and actually these this is probably one of the hardest D&D 5e encounters. I mean, this is four goblins against four characters. This is actually pretty tough. All right. And you're going to notice that all of these tokens are showing as tokens. You got four goblins and they're not placed on a map. Now, if they were pre-placed and had a destination already on a map, they would show check marks. And I'll show you the difference once we get uh, through with this goblin ambush, I'm going to take you to Cragmall Cave and show you a pre-generated encounter that's already on a map. All right. So now that if if you want a map, that's great. If you don't want a map, no problem at all. You can still put these into the combat tracker. Now, first thing you want to make sure is you have your players in the in the combat tracker. So I'm going to take some of my low-level players that I have. I'm going to use Chris Pramus's elf Wolfgang's. Uh, orc. I'm going to use Jen's uh, dwarf, and then I'm also going to use. Uh, well, I'm going to use Rachel's dwarf, and then I'm going to use Jen's elf. All right. So we've, and then I'll use Jonathan's uh, halfling. All right. So now I've got my players in there. They're all level two. Now I want to make sure that I kind of, and you're going to have to set this up ahead of time, or you can do it really quickly. Uh, actually, you can do it really quickly too. Now, in Fantasy Grounds, there is some pre, pre-made pre maps that actually come with Fantasy Grounds. And a lot of people don't know about these maps. Uh, they, don't, they don't come in your map tab already. You have to activate them. And the way that you activate them is you activate them the same way as you would any module that you purchase from a store or any token pack or anything else. So go back to the library go to the modules tab now towards the bottom is going to there's going to start being like maps and tokens and stuff look for the one that's that that says fg battle maps it will be there it's their default for everyone that has fantasy grounds make sure you activate that open the book again make it to where the players can't see it or let them see it if you want to and close out the activation close out the library go back to your maps tab now and when you hit the maps tab same thing look for the little tab on the bottom that says fg battle maps these are all the free maps that you get you get under dark maps under under dark tunnels under dark uh you know caverns you get streets uh you get maps of no grid at all you get maps of grids uh battle maps there you go everything that you want here outdoor we want outdoor because this is an outdoor themed encounter and I know that there's a couple outdoor themed maps. There we go, outdoor one. Let's hit that, bam. Now, this is uh, this is the free map that comes with uh, Fantasy Grounds. This is a nice little map. I mean, it, it is definitely, and plus it's, it's free and it comes with it. So there's a grid here, as you can see. Now let's, we need to do a couple things. Well, we need to do one thing in particular, and that is set a grid to the map, because these maps do not have grids already, uh, you know, attached to them. So what you want to do is go to uh, just anywhere on the map, right click, click on the layers button, and when you click on the layers button, hit this set grid map down here. And what the grid does is it, it tells you, it gives you your measure of, uh, your you know measure of movement it, it keeps the tokens there it it makes their size uh relevant to the size of the creature and it's really really needed all right so now that we've got that selected the set grid these uh, for fantasy grounds 50 by 50 pixels is pretty much what the standard uh grid is for fantasy grounds now i've already got that selected now we're going to draw a square and uh well i'm gonna try to draw a square here we go let's let's do that again right click on the map go to set grid here we go you'll see that we're ready to go now with the the box we're gonna try to get this to 50 and as you can see as the box gets larger uh, there's a little green number that we'll say there you go there's 50 by 50 we'll zoom out and we've done a pretty good job on getting that grid lined up to the grid that was actually on the map perfect we don't even have to move it but in case you're off a little bit 
hey, not a problem, not a problem at all, Goblin. Just go up here to the hashtag and hit the hashtag, and this will be a toggle toolbar, so you can move the, you can see you can move the grid around and measure it, you know. And and if it's a little bit too big, hit the minus sign, and it'll shrink the grid one size, and then maybe that'll fit. But there's just all all kinds of ways to manipulate the grid to where you can get it to line up. It's a beautiful tool. Uh, I'm so glad that this tool is available uh, because it really honestly makes putting grids on maps so easily. It, it makes it so easy. Okay, so now that we're done with setting the grid, the next thing you want to do is uh, pre-place your tokens. Now remember, this Goblin Encounter does not have a standard stock map that Wizards of the Coast has provided for you. So all you have to do is go back to you know the Goblin, Goblin Ambush and open up that encounter and place these tokens where you want them. So you know if you want the ambush to where the goblins are behind the trees, there you go. Just set these goblins behind the trees and it's all it's all good, man. Now see now you see that the, there's check marks for these. Now that means that these are placed somewhere on some map somewhere. <laughs> now, to make it easy on you, it will save this information. It'll save this map. It'll save those, those four goblins on these four grids on the map. And all you have to do is just for future use, if you're going to run Lost Mine of Fandel over again, which I really think this is probably one of the best 5e adventures out there, I mean, I, I really do. You can actually add this map. We'll just map. We'll just minimize it for now. And remember, it's in your map tab, and we used Outdoor One Map. Okay. You can actually add this map to where you don't have to, you know, open up the map button again, you know, the map file again, just to unlock this Goblin Ambush, because you can modify this, and just uh, click on Encounter, and then just put the, uh, just put it right there, and then just uh, rename it from Battle Map to Goblin Encounter Map, Goblin Ambush Encounter Map, all right? So there you go, and then you can bold this stuff, just highlight it and hit Control B, and bam, it's bold. So now you've kind of you've kind of adjusted the module to where, hey, it's gonna work for you in the future. And it'll it'll always work. As long as you don't, you know, as long as you don't change anything, it'll always, you know, stay the same. So now let's go ahead and uh check out the encounter map. So when you click on the little radial here, bam, there's your goblin map. All you have to do is just make sure that those battleground maps are, you know, basically activated in your library. Now, let's go ahead and uh, X this out. We'll close that out. And as you can see, uh, oh man, my, my goblins disappeared. Well, don't worry about it because that was just prepping. When you close that encounter out, those tokens are still saved here. So let's let's go back to the encounter. Now you'll see that your goblins have the check mark, so they're placed somewhere. And now this bot and it has your XP value for the encounter. You know, four goblins are CR1 worth 200 EXP. Now down here at the bottom, there is a button that's called the Add Encounter uh, to the Tracker. It this does two things. When you hit this button. The first thing is it adds the goblins back on the map. That is pretty freaking cool, isn't it? Now, you're going to notice that they're kind of grayed out. They're, they're really transparent. That means that they're invisible. And I, and I really like that it puts things up invisible by default because the players don't know that they're there. The players can't see them. You can only see them. And as, you know, if say if they hear uh, Goblin 2 here, all of a sudden, you know, with a perception check, you can say, oh, by the bush to the north, you heard some shuffling, and you see the, over the top of the bush, you can see a, what appears to be a goblin type of spear. So there you go. You can just uncover him. They know that there's a goblin there now. And you just hit the little eyeball here on the combat tracker. Easy as that. And then once, you know, they know that they're all there, you can just kind of uncover and uh, 
you can do it manually or you can just click the the eye up here at the top and then cover all of them at the same time now the second thing that this add encounter does is it it adds the goblins to the turn tracker for you so you don't have to add them in there manually that's another great thing that saves you time and it also rolls initiative so you can see and they're based off of the same initiative and they rolled a nine they don't have the best initiative which really doesn't matter now you've got everything set up and you're ready for combat now now the next thing you want to do is have your players depending on you know you know there are variables as in surprise and whatnot did the did the goblins actually get the surprise off they would get you know they would get it you know they'd get advantage on their attacks uh, they would also get to go first the players wouldn't get to go so we'll say that the goblins got advantage and we'll place our tokens on the map now remember when you're placing tokens on the map, do not add the tokens from the character selection. Character selection to the combat tracker, and then from the combat tracker to the map. All right, so we'll take our five characters here, and we'll put them on the map, and we'll say this is their order. And they have, you know, we'll, you can also throw down an, another token of a wagon and stuff but that's not really important right now. So we're going to say that this is our this is our order for all of our our players and they did not see the goblins. So, you know, this is what the the, the players would see uh nothing the goblins uh got the jump on them. You'd hit the little eyeball bam. The goblins have surprise. You'd give all the goblins basically a free attack or or free movements or whatever they wanted to do. All right within the you know the rules of D&D &D 5e for surprise and when you're attacking you can do multiple things uh, you can do attacks with melee weapons that require uh, an attack versus AC you can do casters can do uh, spell attacks at range that require an attack roll well you know this you play 5e and then there's also saving throws you know like a cleric could do uh, radiant light or whatever it is and then they would have to do like a dexterity saving throw fireball dexterity saving throw and all you're all you're going to want to do is make sure now whoever's turn it is just uh you can hit the the next actor and by default it'll go to the first person you know we'll say that you know the players they don't get initiative right now because they are uh, under the elements of surprise they've been surprised and now all of the goblins will get to go now make sure you hit this uh, next actor button to make sure goblin one gets to go and on the map you'll see that here goblin one has a white ring around it it's uh, his turn to go goblin one pulls out a his short bow you can see and uh, he's plenty of range. Uh, he's got a plus four to attack, and we'll say that he uh, attacks Cinerik here, the elf. Now you can do two things. You can do a couple things actually. If you just, I think it's the easiest just to drag your attack on top of the token. All right. And when you do that, voila, it will say uh, the attack is a twelve at Cinerik versus the AC, uh, and that was a miss. So now you can take any other movement we'll say that the the goblin kind of uh he the goblin will move a little bit and try to get a better tactical position maybe for next round all right so next you'll go ahead and go to hit the next actor button and when you do that it'll highlight the next goblin that's in the turn order and you can see goblin two goblin two will move up to the edge of this bush and uh he is going to go ahead and shoot his short bow. He's at range. I mean, why not? I mean, let's let's take advantage. The goblins don't have to just run right in and die. They can, you know, they can attack at range. So, well within the 80 to 320 range. And we'll say that the the goblin here uh attacks Amber of Clan Battlehammer. And we'll go ahead and drop that on there. And that is a hit with a 16 versus armor class. Now you'll just take your damage and drop the damage on Amber. And wow, nice damage, which is seven. Seven piercing damage. And you'll see that Amber has already taken some damage previously. And now she's up to 12 damage. So she had five wounds. Now she's at 12 wounds. And uh, she's basically at 
50 percent health and then you even though there's no kind of bloodied or staggered uh you can say i usually say they look like uh, they're in a weakened condition so and then you would just continue to do that and do that and like i said when it's let's say goblin 2 and if if you don't like to just drop things on the on the map which i think is the easiest way you can target uh them also by just holding control and just click on amber and when you do that when it's uh and it has to be your turn for this to work so you'll see that now he's got amber of clan Batterhammer targeted and then voila all you have to do is just you know just double click and voila you don't even have to drag it but it's just you know more of a, a process of targeting untargeting and all that other stuff so yeah i i just like dropping things right on there it's easiest for me but it's uh it depends on what's easiest for you which is the beautiful thing about it if everybody did everything the same way this world would be so damn boring and thank goodness for options all right so you can do it that way uh, or if you'd like to as you can hear the storm coming in the background perfect time for florida always storms coming at uh in the afternoon you can also uh do this too you can pick up your attack if you don't want to use the target or if you don't want to drop it on the map you can also drop it in the turn tracker so you can you can open up your turn tracker with the uh you know the little arrow down here you could stretch it all the way down and uh you could take the attack here and just find amber in the in the tracker and you can just drop it onto there and voila bam another hit amber's just getting massacred today so there you go and then you would roll your damage etc and etc when that goblin's done hit the next actor then the next actor over here which is goblin three he's up so forth and so on rinse and repeat and then you know after this the goblins now have gotten their uh surprise then everybody would roll initiative although the goblins have already rolled automatically from the uh encounter button so the players would roll and then it'll auto adjust everybody uh from ascending from highest roll to lowest roll and then it's just rinse and repeat so there you go that's how you get everything set up uh this would you know and like i said uh goblin some encounters have maps some don't but you can always pre-prep a map if you want to and there's a lot of great maps that are free inside fantasy grounds they've got a bunch that you can get in the store and if you buy the pre-made modules for the most part there are usually encounter maps for everything all right hikiko goblin so now next let's take a look at uh an encounter that's in lost mine found over that is already you know attached to a map already has an encounter map and we'll kind of uh let's let's get some of the stuff closed out and we'll go back to you know we'll go back to we'll close out goblin ambush we'll go back to the uh, index and we'll go to the uh basically Craigmall hideout now that's uh still in part one of Lost Mine of Fandelver, and you just click on Cragmaw Hideout, and now you'll see here's the player map for Cragmaw Hideout, and voila, uh, this is it. Make sure you have it uh, Fog of Ward, and you just uh, you know just go ahead and right click. Now all these pre-made maps will already have grids, so on this pre-made map. Uh, Fantasy Grounds and Doug and the guys, they already take care of putting the grid on the map, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, they do not put Fog of War on it, so you'll have to put Fog of War, which Fog of War basically just covers it up to where your players can't see the entire map. They can only see what you have unmasked. So, right-click on the map, go to uh, Layers again, hit uh, Enable Mask, and you can see that, voila, everything is now dark. The players can't see anything. You just zoom out. Make sure the uh, little button up here is uh, uh, basically turned on, and you just you can just hold down Shift and just kind of draw out uh, what the players can see as they approach uh, Cragmall Hideout. All right, voila! This is what they can see. They can see the shrubs coming up. Uh, you'll have to you'll have to you know put your tokens back down because this is a, a new map. So we'll say that uh, everyone is walking up. They see this cave entrance. 
all right piece of cake very very easy to get set up and these little red pins indicate whatever is in this area of the map so you can just click on it you don't even have to go back to the story tab you know this which is another great thing about you know being able to prepare and plus they have everything prepared for you voila this is the cave mouth here's the narrative little, little portion that you can uh, paraphrase talk to your players now remember there's some goblins over here that are hiding up in the ramparts watching the characters you can make them be asleep sl asleep on the job maybe the characters hear them snoring that's up to you you're the dm you you do whatever you want now you're going to see that there's a another pin over here the red pin sticking up hit that and there you go now you'll see that there's the goblin encounter all you do is hit that now on this you can see that the two goblins they are already put on the map somewhere so you can tell that by the two check marks that that means that they're put somewhere on the map perfect so let's go ahead and generate this and to generate the encounter uh, you can just go ahead and uh, oh, well, let's go ahead and take the old goblins out because we'll say that they were uh, not successful with the ambush now the two goblins here let's generate this encounter there you go it adds them on the map and then bam it adds them in the tr in the turn tracker this time they've got a much better initiative at 18 so maybe we'll uh, put both of them up here on a on a rampart at a wooden rampart that they can see the characters but maybe they fell asleep on the job and they're snoring pretty loud and we'll say that one of the players in the group with their passive perception hears a goblin snoring behind the bush then as the you know the characters go over to investigate you would basically just uncover the rest of this map here uh, and you can you know just do it that way hold down shift and voila there you go characters see the goblins just make sure that they can be seen again with the little I the hide all NPCs button bam there you go they could see him now maybe the party gets an issue maybe the party gets advantage now and then you just go from there so that's that's pretty simple man you know it, it uh it all depends on if there's an actual encounter map and like i said uh some modules some encounters won't have any kind of map so that's when you'll have to you know find a map that you like for that you know for that battle or uh and just build it that way like i said you know pre-placing the tokens uh piece of cake finding a map that you like you can import it into the map folder and there you go so hakiko goblin i hope that helped out uh if you got any other questions ask away on the forums and i'll help you out the best of my ability so there you go everybody uh please feel free to uh, leave a comment down below like the channel subscribe to the youtube channel and until next time good gaming